Today we're gonna to make an easy, under 30 minute seafood dish that the family loves. Let's get into it right now. So we're making cod piccata, really simple dish, and we'll go over the ingredients right here. I have one and a half pounds of cod. You can use other white fish for this. We'll get into that a little bit later. I have three quarter cup of flour. You're not gonna need all of that. You could probably get by with less. We're gonna coat this after we season it up, and then we're gonna use a little bit of that flour to thicken up our sauce at the end. I have one cup of low sodium chicken stock. I'm using chicken base here, low sodium chicken base. You can use chicken stock if you, you know, if you have it. I have three ounces, so a little bit less than a half a cup of dry white wine. This is Sauvignon Blanc. That's gonna give it that nice flavor. Parsley finishes at the end. Lemon slices go into the sauce, and then these lemon wedges you serve for each plate at the end. Butter uh, is gonna sear the fish. Maybe a little bit of olive oil we'll use too. And then the rest of that butter we'll toss with the flour to make our sauce at the end. It's piccata, so no matter what, it's always gonna have capers in it. I have three tablespoons and I rinse them with water. You can soak them to remove some of the salt. If you don't do that, just remember you probably don't need any extra salt in this dish. Finally, we have garlic here. So I'm probably missing salt, pepper, and the olive oil, but really simple dish. This dish comes together so quickly. So let's season up that fish right now. So this is one and a half pounds of cod. So it doesn't look quite like it because these pieces are very, very uh, much on the thick side. If you are following the recipe and the recipe will be exact, the print recipe, all the print recipes, guys, you know, 99% of the time, they're pretty much exact. There might be a couple variations. We always will point it out for you when that is the case. But anyway, this one will be exact. The only variation will be the fish we used and it was still cod, was much on, more on the thinner side. These are thick pieces. So we ended up having six pieces, but it was still one and a half pounds. All I'm gonna do here is cut it into four pieces. Okay, so just, just in half like this. Most of the time, fish places will remove the bones, you know, they'll go over it. I'm gonna season them now with the salt and pepper. Just pat it in so it sticks. And I'm using just kosher salt. Just do that so we can put our flour and kind of lock that salt and pepper in. You can also season your flour with salt and pepper, but you're gonna have to use a little bit more. Okay, just like that, boom, and then just do the other side. I have this parchment paper lined baking sheet here, just a little sheet. This will just make it easy for you because by doing this, and this is for cutlets, for fish, anything that you, you know, you dredge your flour, it gives you time then, it won't stick. So I'm just gonna put it on all of the sides here and now I'm just gonna knock it all off. Very light coating of that. Jim, would you say that the flour is like an essential part of this dish or if somebody is gluten-free, could they eliminate it? They can eliminate it completely. What it does is it gives like more nooks and crannies in here and it will get a little bit better sear on the fish. It develops a tiny bit of a crust and that crust will absorb the piccata sauce. It makes it better and it's it's very easy to do this. We're gonna let it do double duty and become our, our thickener. So if, if somebody was gluten-free, they can use more liquid and then they can just reduce it. All right, so make sure you save this flour, guys. We're gonna use this after. Use a nonstick pan here. Just make it easier for yourself. This is a hard anodized pan. It's a good pan. So we're gonna heat this up to medium heat. And the hard anodized means you can actually use metal utensils in this pan versus the nonstick, like with that Teflon coating, you shouldn't. Heat this up for about a minute. It could be like a four out of 10. It doesn't even have to be medium. Heat that oven up to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, especially a thick filet like this. By the time, if we try to sear it till it's all the way done, it's just, it's gonna fall apart. I'm just gonna put about a tablespoon of olive oil and about a tablespoon of butter. So be gentle with it and be gentle with your fish. I just wanna point something out to you. These are very thick pieces. So the recipe, the written recipe is 325. We're putting these in a platter after they do about three or four minutes per side. The written recipe, you turn off the oven then after you throw it in at a 325 degree oven. That residual heat will finish cooking them. Flipping these over, trying to do it ever so gently. There we go. Sometimes they're gonna break apart on you. It's okay. Oh boy. Okay guys, it's been about seven, eight minutes. They're actually doing pretty well. I think I think we're gonna be able to do the 325 trick and turn off the oven, all right? I gotta put, I'm gonna put them right here on this platter. Oh, it smells so good. It's just salt and pepper with the cod. That's beautiful looking fish. I'm gonna turn this down to about a two, two or three. You can see kind of the, kind of the inside there. It's not bad, you know, you take a temperature thing too, it's probably gonna read about 130 right now. 325 in there, turn it off, 
it's gonna be cooked, all right? Heat is low now, three out of 10. Let's get a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. You can use regular olive oil as well, you know, just so the garlic can get some, get some flavor in there. If you think your garlic's burning, take your pan off the heat. That's it, that's all you have to do. Like, you don't have to be like panicking because what happens is there was a lot of heat in that pan. It might be too much even when I turned it down. So, you know what, I'll just wait. I could turn it off now. I could put it on a hot plate. Now I'm gonna turn the oven off because that was a couple minutes. Okay, and that garlic is perfectly golden like that. Can you see that? It looks great. And now capers, if you, if you worry about burning, the liquid in those capers is gonna stop any burning process. I'm gonna turn the heat back up to medium low. And they only need about a minute there. That's it. Three ounces of our white wine. We had it low, so it's not gonna flare up on you. Now you can turn the heat up high, and you could also put in your chicken stock, one cup. All right, we're gonna let this come to a boil, and we're gonna let it reduce for a few minutes. You can take your wooden spoon and dislodge any of the brown bits, but there's not much here. Let this boil out. We want it to reduce by about half. It's gonna take, depending on how many BTUs you got there, maybe three minutes around there. So here's the flour that we dredged a fish in, and we're just gonna take all the butter in here, kinda just coat all these butter cubes. We want the butter to be a little bit colder. Not a big deal. So we'll use this for our sauce. That'll give it just enough thickening power. Okay, so it's been about three minutes on that sauce. It reduced a lot. You don't wanna go crazy over reducing. It's gonna increase the sodium level and you're not gonna have any sauce. So I'm gonna turn it down now to a simmer. Very low simmer, like a two out of 10 or a one out of five. Remember I told you, I went, almost went to law school. You know, you can put the lemons in when it's boiling, but you know, it might, might make it a little bitter to sauce. Probably not, but this is a little safer. Okay, we have our whisk and now we can add the butter cubes and then we'll do our final taste test on the sauce. So the recipe had five tablespoons of butter total. You used about one for searing of the fish. And now we're just gonna whisk that in and we're gonna cook out that flour and the butter is gonna make just the most amazing tasting sauce right here. If you think the sauce is a little too thick, which I think I put too much flour in there, you could put a little bit of liquid in there to thin it out. You can play around with that. You can go back and forth. It's not a big deal. Oh. It's delicious. I think I put too much flour in there. So we'll thin it out. We're gonna have extra sauce. Now, by putting more water in there, you're gonna just reduce the amount of like salt taste and everything else. So you might have to compensate back, but the lemon slices normally give it enough lemon flavor. You have wedges to serve with. If you want more lemon flavor here, you could squeeze it in right now. Basically, you have the chance to do anything you want here. I'm gonna put in a little bit of parsley too. We'll put more for garnish at the end. And then I'm also gonna put in a lot of black pepper. I am not gonna put any more salt in. Do another taste. Perfect. Let's get the fish platter out, pour this over, and have the taste tester come down. James, dig in and I will get you I will get you to board. Let me get, you want a little bit more sauce? Yeah. Okay, so we have we have a lot of extra sauce, guys. I like this one. Oh yeah, and we have we have the lemon wedges too. So, and and more parsley. Would I you mean, like to squeeze lemon I on mean, it? It's, lemon. it's lemony enough, I know. That's why I like to leave them on the side, because you gotta be careful. You can use flounder for this, which will fall apart more on you. You can use striped bass. You can use any fish here, guys. I mean, you can even use swordfish if you want, you know? You can grill up the swordfish and make the piccata sauce, just put it on top. There's a lot of things you can do. Probably the only fish I wouldn't do it with would be tuna. Big part of when you make seafood is, like we spoke in the beginning, is the fish fresh. If it's not, you're gonna have a hard time making a good dish. Is the fish taste fresh? Does it taste fresh? Yeah, it does. Okay, so you wanna give me a rating? <laughs> I'm feeling really confident about this one, and it's a fish dish. James, I'm stealing a bite. All right. Mm. Yeah, I think it's very lemony. And I don't even think you have to offer the lemon wedges because like it already has like a really strong lemon taste. I, I do like it a lot. The only thing I would criticize is like, I, I know it's part of the dish, but like kind of annoys me how every time pork 
you put your fork through that like it just falls apart. Fish is delicate. Yeah. You're used to, he's used to eating sushi, um, which the fish is not, there's no heat on it yet, so it stays in, it stays together. Yeah. Like you can take a bite, half a bite of a piece of sushi and it's not, it doesn't fall apart. Mm -hmm. Oh, a nine? That's pretty good for not being the best. Yeah. Yeah, I was expecting more. I was like expecting like a seven and a half. I will take that. I feel, I wanted to give it an eight and a half, but then I thought of it. I was like, I think it deserves a nine. 